Okay, so what did we talk about yesterday? Anyone? Bombs. Bombs. What is reverse engineering? What is reverse engineering? What is reverse engineering? What was <clears throat> what was what was the equation? Algorithms plus data structures. Algorithms plus data structures equals equals fun equals programs. Programs are algorithms and data structures. So if you know how to identify algorithms and data structures in uh, in the assembly, then you know how to reverse program. At least that's my hypothesis. What else did we talk about yesterday? What kinds of things did you learn about? <laughs> yep, how to use IDA, how to navigate. <clears throat> Recursion. Mm -hmm. Anybody online? What else did we learn yesterday? What was one of the looping constructs we learned how to recognize in assembly? Four loops. Four loops, yep. Cases. Yep. The the switch case. Uh, yeah, how to do both static and dynamic analysis in IDA. Green means take the jump, red means don't take the jump, blue means unconditional jump. Yep. Blue means loop. I mean, not loop. Bold. What means loop? Bold. Bold, yep. A bolded line means that IDA sees this as looping back. What else? I want to make sure that we touch on the stuff that you're going to have to use for today. Yeah, using breakpoints, debugging. <clears throat> what data types or structures did we talk about? Yep, we talked about arrays. What's the what's one of the forms of uh, of accessing items in a, in an array? Base plus index times something. Size of each bit. Yep, the size of the so base plus the index times the size of the data type. For each of the array uh, indexes. <clears throat> What's another way of accessing parts of an array? one was that. Getting a, basically what this is doing, getting a 
a point, getting the pointer to the start of the <coughs> array and uh, moving that pointer into a register and then adding a number of you know bytes to that pointer so that it points now to a um, instead of at the head of the array, instead of at offset zero, it points at offset 14 hex or at offset whatever. And that would be your um, index times the size of each, uh, the size of the data type that's being stored in each part of the array. Not saying that you're going to have to remember what that looks like for the next phases, but you're going to have to remember what that looks like for the next phases. But will we have to know what that looks like for the next phases? Maybe. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to switch. Recursion. How do we deal with recursion when we see it in assembly? What's the uh, what's the first thing that we do? What was that? Yep, the, yep. The terminal condition is the base case. <laughs> yes, and we cry. Recursion equals cry. Yeah. All righty. So let's, end. well, first of all, any questions, anything that you want me to go over again from yesterday? Well, I have, I have a philosophical question. Is it related to reverse engineering? Yes, absolutely, okay. 100%. Um, I, prescribe, I prescribe to the Calvin and Hobbes ethos of you, sh you shovel snow because it's good for you, mm -hmm. right? And I recognize that there is a substantial portion of reverse engineering that requires one to delve into assembler. Mm -hmm. um, and I liken what we were doing in the previous class where we were using GDB is um, shoveling snow with a hand trommel. And I think we've graduated to snow shovels. I have to yeah. ask, however, um, is there a snow blower at our disposal? <laughs> um, there's... <How> <laughs> right. I'm, so, so for instance, one of the... the, the it seems as though, at least, and maybe this is just a function of the bomb lab itself, if you spend mm -hmm. quite a bit of time of translating assembler into what the C would have looked like, mm -hmm. right? And I'm curious, um, is that a reasonable thing to do in an automated fashion? So there's there are products out there, COTS products. Um, for example, the Hexrays decompiler plugin for IDA, mm -hmm. which costs I think more than in IDA license itself. How much have we talked a couple thousand bucks? Um, it's been a little bit since I've looked, but I think it was around like three thousand. Um, so, so it's 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 quite an investment for an individual, but for a, a company, it's it's definitely it's worth getting something if you're looking at a complicated function that's doing a lot of um, pointer arithmetic and, right. and arithmetic, um, it can help a lot. I act I've actually used it to help identify a uh, encryption algorithm where in the assembly it was just a mess and I was able to use this plugin and say, okay, just show me the kind of C pseudocode um, for this and it showed me and just by looking at the algorithm in C, which was a lot easier to understand, uh, I was able to go, oh, okay, here are constants that it's using and this is this particular encryption algorithm. So there are tools that can help with that, but it's not a It's not, what am I trying to say? It's, it's certainly something where you have to know the half, the case, how to not use it for when 
that doesn't quite work or to better understand the results that a tool like that is giving you. Um, I would say that using IDA um, is actually like using the snowblower because what that's automating for you and, and maybe you know it's it doesn't seem this way but it, it really helps is identifying functions. Yeah. Um, just the how to identify that this bit of code is all one function. Uh, that is actually a a large problem um, that is still trying to figure out the best way of doing that. And and Ida does a really good job, but especially in malware analysis, it's as soon as you get a little bit of obfuscation attempts in there, it goes uh, right. Um, and so you have to know how to go in and okay, this isn't undefined. All this, it's not a function, and actually start going through it yourself in order to fix it up. Okay. Um, Well-formed code is easy to reverse. Relatively easy to reverse. It's it's when you start taking a look at something that is a little obfuscated or is using like the latest, um, if you're using the latest compiler optimizations, um, it might be doing something a little different that Ida doesn't know about. Oh, of course, as Ida doesn't work on 64-bit code. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure the pro version of Ida, maybe not the free version, but I think the pro version. Oh, hex rays. Oh, yeah, the hex rays plugin. Um, the hex rays, the decompiler plugin for Ida, he's saying doesn't work on 64 bit code. Why add the accordions? It has as much of background in it and stuff. Why do you take these classes? <laughs> well, that's another philosophical question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh -huh. um, so, Corey had asked, is there an easier way to reason about those recursive functions besides just working out a few examples by hand? No. <laughs> um, if, if, you, if you think of something, let me know. Um, or if you think of a, a different way that, that it can be shown. Um, I'm, I don't, so what I'm typically looking at is malware, and I don't see, I'm not going to say I never see it, but I don't usually see recursion being used. Usually if they're if they're trying to do something that's going to use recursion, it's going to be in a library that they just load and call the API call. Um, having said that, there is obfuscation techniques that uses kind of recursion like or has recursion-like properties. So, so knowing what, what that looks like and, and how to deal with recursion can help with some obfuscation techniques or deobfuscation. I'll see if for the malware analysis class if I can find a specific um, example of recursion-like obfuscation. <laughs> so any other questions on what we covered yesterday?
So the bomb, bomb lab phase, four, oh no, we did four already. 